the mini split is a source of heating found in, in, in buildings. It's often called a mini split heat pump or a mini split unit. There are, there are all different types of units. This particular one has the condensing unit on the outside and the evaporative unit on the inside. They call them mini splits because they're very small, they're very compact. On all of these units, with the, with the outside condensing unit, we have a power disconnect, comes over to the unit. There is some form of line set that communicates back inside the building. These units can have one zone, two zones, four zones. I, there's units up to eight zones that can come off of one condensing unit. And so they're, they're very convenient. Any place that you can snake a line set, you can add an inside unit. And so they're very good for, retro, uh, for, for retrofitting into buildings. You'll find these a lot in, uh, in server rooms where they need extra, extra cooling. In looking at these units per the COMSOP, first you have to identify what type of unit it is, what's their source of energy, and then you'll record all the model and serial number data from the side plate. In looking at these units, you should make sure you photograph all that information and then assess the unit for levelness. Levelness is really important because with any condensing unit, any unit that's off level allows the refrigerant oils to sit in one side of the compressor and makes the unit work just that much harder and that, and that much more labor. With these units, why I particularly like this, this typical install is within this black ductwork that they've installed, they've got the line set and then they're also bringing back the condensate pipe. So that's what you'll see dripping off the bottom of this unit is the condensate pipe. On all evaporative units, we do have a condensate that is, uh, that is created. Sometimes that pipe is very visible in this case, and sometimes it's going into some other case and some other spot in the building, usually into the plumbing system that you can't see. I've also seen these units where the evaporative uh, condensate is coming down and it goes right into a condensate pump in, the, in that room, and then that pump directs it to some other dedicated location. You should also, when you, when you see these units, make sure there's not excessive vibration and that you have the normal heat in the cooling cycle coming off the unit into the space. Then the operation is typically done on the inside using a remote control and the evaporative unit that's located on the inside of the building. We'll go there and take a look at the inspection of the inside next. One of the advantages of a mini split or mini split heat pump system is the fact they're ductless. And so these can be installed throughout a building wherever I can snake the line set for the evaporative or the heating unit. That is located up here in this box. And so there's a huge advantage of this. So if I, wanna, if I have a server room that needs extra cooling, I might never use heat in the server room. I would put one of these units in and then snake the line set down from the roof. If I have an office that needs more heat or more cool, as long as I can snake the line set as well as the condensate pipe that comes off the unit, then I have the ability to add these units anywhere I want. The advantage of these units is they operate on a simple remote control. If I turn the power on, immediately the louvers will open and go to whatever the, whatever the cycle is. Right now I'm in the cooling cycle. I'll turn the temperature down a little bit to 66. And in a moment, this will start blowing out cold air to provide us with the ambient cooling for this room. We're in a room that's approximately 15 by 15. And so this unit here will make this very chilly very fast. Uh, and then we don't, again, we don't have to have ductwork, we don't have to have anything that is going to uh, impede any other operation. These are perfect for buildings with on slabs, perfect for buildings that we need extra heat or extra cool. And so we would operate this unit. Open this up. And then uh, allow this to operate and allow this to run. I can turn the fan on higher or lower, depending on how fast and how much recovery I need. The inspection of this, turn it on in its mode. Again, use your infrared thermometer. Test its temperature. See what the output temperature is, 56 degrees. 
I would say that was going to suffice to make this plenty cold. Again, this does not have a return system, so air is not going to cycle back. This is a positive force system. And so as soon as this room hits its temperature to where the thermostat on the remote control has, then it will shut the unit off. If you open the door, the air evacuates. And so your testing of a system like this is simply with the remote control and test its temperature, make sure the outside unit is, is working properly, and then remove it and turn it back to where it was when you began. Any other questions, make sure you, res uh, you, you always refer to the ComSOP and the operations. Don't test one of these systems if it is in a shutdown position. The only way you have a shutdown position on these units is either the breaker that supplies the power to it or the outside service disconnect. This is not a typical shutdown position. All this is is a remote control that operates the unit. So operating this in an off state is perfectly permissible. Good luck with your inspections.